Morning guys, uh, welcome to my kitchen, which is also basically my living room and bedroom. It's a very open concept condo. Um, but today I want to do like uh, those what I eat in a day videos. I uh, recently realized I was gluten and dairy intolerant, or I think so. Maybe it's all in my head, but I mean, you do a trial and error and you realize you know, that stuff makes me feel like shit, so I'll stop eating that stuff. And then of course I went down like the YouTube rabbit hole of self-diagnosis and I was like, yes, I have that. <laughs> but it, it, it can't hurt, right? So I'm gonna, I'm avoiding gluten and dairy. Um, that's not to say I don't eat carbs. I'm still gonna eat carbs, but just not like wheat products. And that's not to say I'm vegan. I'm still gonna eat meat and uh, like eggs just not dairy. So uh, my first meal of the day, I don't really eat breakfast, um, like first thing when I wake up, but I'll, I eat when I'm hungry. So I kind of have like a brunch. So it's 10.30 now. So by the time I prepare this, it'll be about 11. So that'd be like a brunch. And the first meal of the day, I, uh, I just avoid carbs altogether. So it'll be like meat and fat with a vegetable. Um, and like I said, I'm not averse to carbs, but I just find that when I eat carbs, I kind of feel a little bit sluggish, um, physically and mentally. Um, and that makes sense because like insulin is a, it's a rest and digest hormone, right? Like that's why you feel sleepy after Thanksgiving and Christmas dinner. Like you just, your body's like, okay, now is the time to absorb nutrients rather than expend energy right um and so there's carbs three macros carbohydrates uh protein and fats but carbohydrates um cause the highest like insulin release like they have such a high glycemic index meaning like you get a rush of those glucose molecules into your blood system and then the liver senses that and then spikes your insulin so that it, all your cells can absorb all that glucose which is a good thing you don't want to have high blood glucose um so things with high glycemic index aka carbs cause the insulin release and cause that rest and digest signal which is what i think is happening to me and causing that sluggishness but protein and fat protein and fat also do signal insulin increase because your cells need to uptake the fat and the protein as well but Protein, in fact, have like a lower glycemic index, which means that the molecules like trickle into your blood system. So you don't get an insulin spike. You get an insulin trickle as well. So you got like that mellow, like just steady state insulin release. So that's what I think is happening to me with the sluggishness after the carbs. So I'm just going to avoid it because I don't want to be sluggish and brain dead for my work day and, you know, work, trying to work out. But later on, I will eat carbs as it gets closer to the evening time when I do want to rest and digest. So uh, my protein, fat, and vegetable that I'm gonna have for my brunch is a burrito bowl, but made with cauliflower rice instead of uh, rice rice. So I'm going to, this is a, as my protein, I'm gonna have a, a chicken breast, a whole chicken breast. What are chickens on these days? Birth control, hey? And I'm going to uh, season it with this uh, chipotle peppers and adobo sauce. This stuff is spicy. Um, and I'm gonna make my own pico de gallo. I don't buy bottled salsa, not in this house. Um, so I'm gonna do tomatoes, shallots, lime and lime zest. And uh, these are chives. Chives, yeah, they're kind of wilting so they they're screaming like, use us before we die. I shall oblige. And then I'm gonna make uh, guacamole, avocados, obviously, cilantro. Like, why can't you just buy a normal amount of cilantro? Like, why do they have to sell you a whole forest of cilantro? I don't know. Um, and then uh, I'm gonna do a scotch bonnet pepper. I cut it, I like take the seeds out and cut it up real fine and put it in there um, because I'm Trinidadian and we just like go ham with hot things <laughs> the way like white people just put salt on their food before even tasting it like Trinis just like put hot sauce before even tasting it um, and then so this is the cauliflower rice I get from a a meal 
meal kit service that I get, but it's pretty widely available now. I see it in all the grocery stores in the frozen food section, so pretty widely available. I guess you can make your own if you have a food processor, just put the cauliflower head in there. That's pretty much how they make it, but. And then to top it off, I'm gonna put some pepitas, which I made. So I buy these raw pumpkin seeds and you can just, just fry it in the pan just to toast them. Um, but I put some of this on them before toasting them. Um, we'll see how it pans out. It's a bold move, Cotton. We'll see how it pans out. Okay, you know what? I figured I would show off my knife skills. Because how else am I going to find a husband? Did you guys know that YouTube was actually invented as like a dating app? So people, yeah, anyway. So we're throwing it back. So I cut off the stemmy end and then cut it down the middle. Oh, you need a nice sharp, sharp knife for this. Don't be scared of sharp knives. You're more likely to cut yourself with a sharp knife. No, with a dull knife than a sharp knife because the dull knife will slip on whatever you're trying to cut and then it will cut you instead. So make sure your knives are nice and sharp. So cut it down the middle and then the middle again. And then each piece you put on its side and just cut out the middle. Cut out that middle man like so. I'll do those after and then this little segment here, then you fine dice that. And let the knife do the, like don't smush things, don't press down glide you want that friction so that's why I'm pressing down but gliding the knife and then use the knife as a receptacle to pick it up and plop it in the bowl knife skills 101 there's more where that came from okay so here's all the tomato cut up with the half of the onion uh limes and then i diced up some of those um those chives that's why it's very green and uh yeah let's just squeeze the lime in there because that's really all pico de gallo is come on lime like get with the fucking program oh my god my grip strength oh my god so you do have to kind of like let the lime like um kind of ceviche it, right? Especially the onion. So that's why you do make this first. Like don't make it at the last minute right before you're about to make the, the put the bowl together. Like make this and let, let it marinate. Guac, so two avocados, two cloves of garlic. I didn't mention that, but I'm gonna do clove, garlic cloves and squish it in this thing on that side a bunch of cilantro, maybe like a handful in total. And then this guy, this guy, and the other half of the lime and salt and pepper. Okay. Okay. <laughs> then you just rotate it. Make sure you get it down the line. Pivot. Oh my God, that's great. And then to get the seed out, don't fuck around with a spoon, just stab it turn it and then just flick it in your bin. Do not cut the scotch bonnet pepper or any pepper with your bare hands. Like if you have gloves, you can use gloves or I'm using a, a fork to hold it because that shit will like, not only like if you touch your eye afterwards, it'll burn your eye, but even just it being on your skin, it will burn your skin, okay? Um, so just don't, don't touch it. <laughs> okay, so I mashed up the avocado. I needed a little assistance from this. Um, I mean, you gotta know your audience, right? Like if I had people coming over for dinner or whatever, or brunch, I guess, whatever, um, I would maybe not put the scotch on it, but I know myself, I like it spicy. But not too spicy. Let's see what this tastes like. Oh yes, it's spicy, but like good. It's like burn in the back of your throat. It's gonna be good with the other things. Ooh. Okay, so I've made the bowl. I made the cauliflower rice. You just fry it in the pan for like six minutes. And then I put the guac and the pico. And then this is the chicken breast that was sauteed, that was marinated in that adobo sauce. It's a lot of meat. It's a lot of food. 
Um, I eat a lot of food though. And then these are the pepitas. Let's just, yes, crunchy. Although the cauliflower is a little bit crunchier than rice would be, so that's fun too. There we have it. It's this much, this much. It's a lot. Anywho, I don't know how many calories this is. Let's just eat it. And I'm gonna eat it all on camera, I guess, and then like edit it. Because apparently nobody believes you eat the food unless you film yourself eating all of this food. A note about water. Do drink it. But maybe you've been told to drink more water. <clears throat> it's not drink more water. Like you don't have to drink more fluids, like you're gonna be peeing all the time. Just the fluids that you are drinking, make it water. So instead of your juice and your pop, drink water, okay? Because first of all, all the sugars in there are extra calories. Oh, I should turn the stove off. Are extra calories and also sugar can be dehydrating. So then you're just drinking pop and then you have to drink water, like, you know? Maybe you don't know, but I'm telling you it can be dehydrating because it's it's a solute in the water. So just drink water. I know a lot of people, they can't like have a meal without like a sweet sugary drink, like pop or juice. And then, you know, they'd be like, well, juice is from fruit, so it's healthy. Like, sure, it has some vitamin C and stuff, water soluble vitamins, but it's not the same as eating the fruit. It's just It's just sugar water with vitamin C really. So one of the one of the easiest like weight loss tips and to like limit your calories is to just drink water instead of juice. Don't don't drink your calories, you know. Eat your calories. So I'm getting kind of full, but I'm going to push through because I want to feel full. Like I don't you know if you don't feel full, then you'll want a snack. Like eat, eat when you're hungry is my motto and eat until you're full. A lot of my friends and one friend in particular, you know who you are, she doesn't eat her food. Like she doesn't eat her food yet. She'll always be snacking. I'll go over to her house and we'll have three tacos each. I eat all my tacos in like five minutes. She's still on taco number one. Then I finish another one of her tacos and she's like, I'm good. So she eats one taco, I eat four tacos. And she's like, oh, I'm not that hungry. 10 minutes later, she's like, oh, should we make popcorn? I'm like, no, I'm full. I had four tacos, I had food. But she didn't have food. She's gonna have a snack. So stop snacking so much, people. Like that, you know, and all these things that we think are healthy snacks, like muffins. Muffin is like the worst invention of mankind in my opinion because people think it's, I don't know what, why people think it's a healthy option. Like if you were having a muffin for breakfast, it's a cupcake. You just had a cupcake for breakfast, okay? Would you have, would you have cake for breakfast? No. Why would you think it's okay to have a muffin like every day as your breakfast, you know? And if you're hungry, like eat, eat your lunch. I would, people would always see me in the lunchroom at, when we were at the office at like 10, 10.30. They're like, oh, are you having your breakfast? I'm like, no, it's my lunch, but like, I'm hungry. I'm not gonna go and have a croissant and a latte that equals like 300 calories and wait to eat my lunch at some arbitrary time that we deemed as appropriate for lunch. I'm like, I'm hungry and I have food in the fridge. I'm gonna go eat it. And then I don't need that croissant and latte, you know? But people, they go and they have the croissant and latte because they're hungry, and then that doesn't really fill them up, but it's still extra calories, and then they eat their lunch anyway at noon when is the deemed appropriate time to eat lunch. So then they just consume like 800 calories, right? 300 plus about 500 in their lunch. Like why? Just eat your food, eat the food that you had at whatever time you're hungry, and then you wouldn't have had the need to have that snack. That's my rant. I use a little fitness, what is it called? fitness pal I don't use it every day but I will use it today just to count up these calories so I can let you guys know how many calories I ate today so you can know but I like you don't have to use them if you know 
how to kind of ca count calories in your head, but it's a very educational tool. I would recommend if you are trying to lose weight or just be aware of your calories because it just teaches you how many calories are in things, right? And after using it for a while, you might you won't need it anymore. Like you never like maybe you never knew how many calories was in like an apple and then you punch an apple into the app and it it'll tell you and you so over time you'll learn how many calories are in an apple and how many calories are in various things. So you can just look at a plate of food and be like, that has about 500 calories. My daily allowance is 2000, so that's a quarter of my allowance. You know, you'll start just doing the mental math. Um, but the apps are good to just learn. It's a good educational tool. However, I still have no idea what how many calories are in this. I'm not there yet. But I also don't really care. Because I'm not trying to lose weight. But I, I did think it was a good tool. Like even me with all my fitness and nutrition knowledge, I was like, oh, holy almonds have so many calories. It is not a healthy snack. At least not in the quantity I eat them. I can eat a whole bag of almonds because they have a lot of fat, right? All done. Yum. Okay, just gonna tidy up a bit and then I'll see you later for dinner. Drink your water. Hey guys, uh, so I just want to come on and uh, clarify that I'm not like anti-snack, like I'm not averse to snacking. Um, it's just the kinds of shit that people choose to snack on. It's not, it's not food, it's just junk. So let me just show you how uh, a snack that I have. So uh, dairy-free uh, yogurt, which is made of coconut milk. This is from Good Food, the meal subscription kit that I get. And then I make like a parfait, so I have some of that. Blackberries. And then I segment a blood orange. What y'all know about segmenting citrus fruits? Nothing, let me tell you. And then I will top it with some sunflower seeds. Um, so I'll just uh, segment the orange. Let me show you how that's done. Get yourself a nice big knife so you can have some distance from the blade, a nice sharp one, and you cut off, you can't see, fuck. Anyway, you know what I mean. You cut it off so it's like that. I know, I need the camera to be over there. Anywho, you know what I mean. Let's cut it so it's like that. And then like so. Oh my God, shut the fuck up. And then you like, skin it like this. So you need a sharp knife, but like I said before, let the knife do, don't squish it, just back and forth. Let the knife, let the blade do the work for you. That's what you bought it for, right? Okay, it's pretty, pretty clean, except for on that side. So then just turn it over and then do the same thing from this side. show you guys but it's not the right angle imagine I'm like trying to show you guys and I like cut myself because I'm not doing it the right angle and I'm like do as I say not as I do and then should I turn the light on the sun is glaring outside I had it no that's too much like I have to close all the blinds because it's the afternoon and the sun is right there so anyway and then very gently and delicately you cut in between the what are these sinews and then and then you just get that segment out the first one's hard because you can't really see but once you get that first one out then you can see where the where the skin starts and ends and you just cut the flesh out 
Again, I'm letting the knife do the work. I'm not squishing the fruit. That's why you need a nice sharp knife. Watching a flower unfold kind of thing. And there you go. Let's just squeeze the juice out. I have a container. I've been, so these citrus juices, I have some grapefruit. You can mix it with honey and make like a vinaigrette to have with like a spinach salad or something. It's good stuff. So I'll just squeeze it out. The blood orange, even with the shitty light, you can't, you can see how beautiful it is. I actually really enjoy the uh, dairy-free yogurt alternative things because I really like coconut and uh, coconut based. Most of them. Mm. Island girl here. I like everything coconut. That's fine, that's fine. Nice, nice, nice. And then I'll do some sort of like sunburst thing with this, like, sure. Get real fancy like. Look at that juice. It's such a pretty color. And then just do a tablespoon of the sunflower seeds. So that's the kind of snack that I have. Lots of actual fruit, not just fruit juice. So all the fiber is in there. Berries are one of the lowest glycemic index fruits. So that's always a good choice. Yummy. Try it for yourself. I'm gonna have this. See you later. Hey guys. Now it's dinner time. I decided not to work out because I was tired and sore from yesterday's workout, but decided not to is the operative term. My default being that I work out every day. And in the spirit of doing things that you wouldn't normally do, I'm gonna try a new recipe on camera for your enjoyment. Um, the inspiration for this is a, tri a classic Trinidadian dish is uh, curry duck. But in Trinidad, they use just like all these weird cuts of duck and they put it in a pot and they make a curry out of it. It's delicious, but it's a lot of like bone. Um, but <laughs> here in Canada, you get like fancy things like just duck breasts, right? Yeah, so I already took it out and I pat it dry. So there it is. Um, I've never cooked a duck breast before, but I looked up. All you really need to know is how to cook it, right? Like the sauce and stuff, you can like do your own thing, but it's like, what do I do with this? Do I roast it? Do I pan fry it? Basically you have to do it kind of low and slow, but in a pan. So start off on a cold pan um, so that the fat renders, so you don't put any oil in the pan. And it says to score the, so the skin here, take a knife and you make like a, a waffle pattern back and forth so that like the, the fat can get through the skin and render and it like cook in its own juices. And you just do like salt and pepper right now my hands are. Yeah, and then another classic Trinidadian thing is plantain. So I'm gonna fry the plantain. So I'm gonna peel it, cut it like so, like round little, uh, what do you call those? They're not gonna be circles anymore. Ovals, I guess they'll be. Um, before you fry them though, you wanna put cornstarch on them. So cornstarch, salt and pepper, you could put a seasoning, some sort of spice blend in there if you want, but yeah, you need the cornstarch on there. Um, and then for veggies, I've already prepped them. This is Gai Lan, um, which is like an Asian green vegetable thing that you, I think it's in the family of bok choy. So I just, um, on the pan, I put on this sheet pan, I put some olive oil. Little. I put olive oil in here, so then I just like spray. So for things like this, I can just like give them a little, a little shower of olive oil, salt and pepper, and then I uh, put a spice blend just for something. It's called the Zesty Herb Spice Blend. So the instructions say, after about five minutes, the fat should begin to gently bubble. And you can hear it gently bubbling. So I'm doing it right, yeah. And then it says, let it do that for 15 minutes, so. Do you guys see it? I'm excited. Okay, so the duck has about five more minutes on that side. 
like you're basically cooking it low and slow on the skin side and the skin's getting seared and then you just flip it just to cook the outside on the next side but now I'm gonna fry the plantains uh, I, just, I just put a shallow a shallow layer of canola oil because you don't gotta use fancy like uh, olive oil just to fry some plantains and I got paper towel ready to put that in look how weird and beautiful that is Are you going off? Are you actually off? Stop fucking around. Yum. I love plantain. I definitely could have eaten that whole plantain, but I didn't. Take it easy, Rohanna. So yeah, that was Din Din's. Hope you enjoyed experimenting with me. I'm gonna go have a bath. And then if I have a snack, I probably will have a snack because I'm still a little bit like, mm, I could have eaten more. Um, and I'll show you what I like, another healthy snack. <laughs> okay, bath time. Hey guys, so I am gonna have a, a snack slash dessert. Hi, we lad. Can you go to the bed please? Thank you. Just go up here. There you go. Go, good job. So often as a snack, I'll just have a bowl of cereal why not it's better than a muffin um so normally i just do like cheerios like the og cheerios is gluten-free because it's made of uh oat flour there's no wheat in it right um but then i was at whole foods and i got this fancy shit it's pretty good it's just fancy cornflakes basically berries so i'm gonna go ham on these blueberries because they were on sale there's like two of these for six dollars i'm just gonna put them all one thing though in being going dairy free is a lot of the dairy free milk alternatives it doesn't have the protein that milk would have right so i'm missing a lot of that protein um because i normally this is uh oat milk or i'll do a cashew milk or almond milk but there's this youtuber named derek more plates more dates dot com his uh his youtube channel is just called more plates more dates um, and he had a video like years ago, but people started watching it again this like nowadays where he's he just drinks egg whites Which I was like Kind of like grossed out by when I first heard it But then I was like you people put that in cocktails, right? Like they put it in cocktails shake it up to make it foamy So I was like why not I do buy egg whites to like supplement my scrambled eggs So I had this and I was like maybe I can use it to like enhance the protein content of the oat milk or the cashew milk or whatever the oat milk is especially low in in protein so i did like put like half and half in here um half oat milk half i maybe shouldn't have put so much um because what if i hate it but from what uh i've seen on social media people trying it they say it, it tastes like nothing, it doesn't really, and like egg whites have no smell. It smells like literally nothing. I haven't actually tasted it yet. Mm. Mm. Where's my water? <laughs> I mean, it's not bad. Let me taste what it, I feel like it would it just make the oatmeal like a little bit thicker, which is what it does in cocktails. Yeah. So and then it just buttresses the uh, like a whole cup of this only has three grams of protein and a third of a cup of this has 10 grams of protein. This basically has no protein like. Legit. I'm happy I got that tip from Derek More Plates More Days dot com. Um, eat. Like, are you going outside? No, you're not. Stop fucking around. Messes. Don't sass me. Hello again. So it's the next morning. Ugh. I kind of cleaned up. So it's the next morning, and. Uh, 
I just wanted to bonus footage show you how an interesting recipe for a smoothie since I don't really like bananas I will still put bananas in smoothies but uh, a cool alternative is butternut squash so I buy frozen butternut squash and you can just uh, cook it in the microwave you just put a little bit in like a micro safe microwave safe bowl and it's fresh out of the microwave and just microwave it for like three minutes and it's ready and that's a good like starchy alternative base to a smoothie as opposed to bananas um so i'm gonna put that in there i've also added some frozen peaches ice and some pumpkin seed butter i don't know i'm trying various nut butters um, okay, let's put this in now. Ooh, hot. And then I'm gonna do a vegan protein powder, only because I can't do milk products. Whey is a milk product, gray casein is a milk product. I guess there's egg white powder I can get. Maybe I'll try that next. Cause this is really, it's very like thick, but oh, it's brand new. I've had it before. I have the chocolate one too. Okay. Where's the scoop? Oh my god, the scoop's like buried in there. I'll just use this tablespoon thing that I have. Put a couple of these in. What's the dosage here? I don't know. The scoop is pretty large. That's the thing with these. It's like one, yeah, one scoop has 30 grams of protein but how 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 big is one scoop if the scoop if one scoop is like half the container then that's not very effective okay and then i'll put the creatine that's the only two like supplements that i i take is creatine and protein powder um i don't know there's all these bcaas and shit like it's like it's just components of food really that they've made into a powder so I feel like if if you're eating enough food for your needs then you don't need powders but creatine is not something you could get in that dosage through food I think you have to eat like an entire cow each day in order to get enough creatine like that amount of creatine so yeah you may as well uh get that because it's super cheap create create creatine monohydrate it's it's accessible and i got some maple syrup but i won't add it until i taste taste what it tastes like without this because i find this protein powder is quite sweet it's vanilla flavored so i'll just blend it up take a little taste if i want any sweetness then then you can do that at the end right so don't just it's like don't just front load your sugar taste it first um oh i didn't get a liquid can do good old silk almond milk. That's nice. Why why am I giving you bonus footage? I just want to say that it may look like I eat a lot because I do. But I'm not telling you you need to eat like this unless you work out like the way I work out as well, okay? I eat this many calories and this much food. I don't, I don't know how many calories it is, but I eat this much food because I work out almost every single day and I work out intensely. Um, I work out frequently, like often, consistently. I've been working out like that for a number of years and intensely, like I work out real hard, so. I need this many calories, I need this much food. Most women probably wouldn't. So that's just a caveat. Anyway, like, subscribe, and please, please comment. It's very important, apparently, the comments, like for the YouTube algorithm, okay? So if you wanna, if you wanna share, share row with the rest of the world, comment so the algorithm will think I'm hype and then like recommend me to other people, okay? So come back next time for more fitness, food, and skincare. Bye.